What's good gamers? I've been seeing a lot of builds popping up recently, but didn't come across any builds running Fireball as a main skill surprisingly. I had a blast with this build during the betas and have put together a build guide to carry it all the way into the end game. Now I will be playing hardcore on launch, but that doesn't mean that you have to. There's actually two links for builds down in the description. One will be for softcore and one will be for hardcore. The builds are virtually the same except one uses hydras and the other uses ice barrier for more survivability. Now this build is phenomenal for solo or group play, keep in mind the fireball enchant allows other members of your party to benefit from the explosion on death as long as they are in the same dungeon as you or within a few screen lengths in the normal world. Pretty much every sort will be utilizing the fireball enchant, however with our build being specced into fireball we can maximize the potential DPS from it. Not to mention, Fireball has some of the most insane uniques later on, such as Gloves of the Illuminator and Staff of Endless Rage, which will basically turn you into a human hydra. Now, I don't want you to pay too much attention to my gear in the background video, as this was just one of the beta weekends that allowed us to get to level 25, and I've min-maxed the build a lot since then on stream. The links to the build below will have up-to-date aspects, paragon boards, skill enchants, all that, so make sure you check it out in the description. But that's enough talking, let's get into what actually makes the build work. We're going to be starting off with just taking one point into our generator, and then we're going to slam out fireball. Obviously this is our bread and butter in the comp and we want to make sure we have as many points as possible. We're going to be taking enhanced fireball and destructive fireball so we get as much crit as possible. Next up we're going to be going into flame shield, enhanced flame shield, mystical flame shield. This is going to give us plenty of mana cost reduction. We're going to be able to blast off firewall, fireballs as much as we want, but you can take the potion version that heals you whenever you flame shield instead if you want. Hydras we're going to be using early on. I don't really like to use them in my late game build. They feel like a DPS loss, especially post nerf. We're not going to use anything over here. We use meteors early on until we can get inferno, but as soon as we can get inferno, we swap back to fireball as our main skill and we're never casting meteor. We don't take anything in there after we reach around level 25 or so and have 25, 26 skill points. Inferno is actually insane because it pulls your enemies in and it causes all your skills to have no mana cost. So you're able to just blast off constantly if you want to. But let's get into a dungeon and I'll show you guys a little bit of what this build is like. Another thing not to sleep on on Sorks is they have probably the best movement in the game with that teleport. Uh, I know they've made some adjustments to the range, but man, it goes up and down terrain. It can go damn near two, three screens away sometimes. Uh, I'm curious to see how much of that that's actually changed. Make sure you have your fireball enchantment. We will be using flame shield in situations that are too scary, you know, where we feel like we might die. Or uh, if we're doing some campaign content, like a dungeon that we haven't done before, we'll just equip a uh, flame shield just in case. That gives you two invulnerabilities. You get your normal flame shield invulnerability, as well as if your enchant procs whenever you drop to lethal damage. Now it doesn't matter if your regular flame shield is on cooldown, like your regular ability, it'll still proc that enchantment passive if you drop to lethal damage, which is massive. Not to mention flame shield is also reducing our mana costs as well as giving us movement speed which is phenomenal for running through the map as quickly as possible. Uh, but let's get into this dungeon. This isn't going to be an extreme showcase, you're not going to see 2 billion damage coming out. I'm only level 25, uh, I didn't get access to their early uh, release build that a lot of content creators got access to, but uh, yeah, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that this build's going to absolutely pump later on. Now, this is the main setup that I'm going to be using for my hardcore push to be, you know, one of the first 1,000 uh, players to achieve level 100. Uh, we're going to be hopefully getting Staff of Endless Rage, which means that every third cast of Fireball launches two additional projectiles. So every third time you cast it, you're going to get two extra ones. So potentially every three casts, you get five Fireballs, right? Um, next up, we're going to use Aspect of Binding Embers. Flame Shield lets you move unhindered through enemies, which is massive, okay? But then on top of that, while you move through enemies, you're immobilizing them for two to three seconds based on uh, where you have it slotted at. 
Uh, th this is phenomenal. It gives us immobilize, which is something that we don't really have a lot of in our uh, build. We have it in Inferno whenever we take Aspect of Armageddon, which whenever we cast Inferno, we'll get a meteorites that fall during it, and they will do fire damage on impact as well as immobilizing enemies for three seconds. So that's two forms of immobilize that we're going to have right there. One that we can just hit on command pretty much, and the other one will be more of our ult ability. Uh, all right, well next up we have the Timetry. I don't know if that's how you say that, but um, I'm not 100% sure if these are the pants that I'm gonna go for. Keep in mind, these are unique, so if they drop, I'll use them. If they don't, then I'll use something else. Um, th these are really good survivability pants. They give you extra potion charges. They give you higher chance to get potions. Um, they give you a larger chance to heal. Uh, so many benefits come out of these, as well as their unique effect, right? Where effects that heal you beyond 100% life grant you a barrier up to 40 to 80% of your maximum life that lasts for eight seconds. So if you're over healing, then you'll be getting a barrier constantly, which we are in the in-game version of the build. We're going to be healing constantly using fiery surge soul fire warmth warmth will every one second will heal me for a percent of my maximum life for each nearby burning enemy and that it's increased against bosses so we're gonna have some massive healing there um yeah i i think these pants are great for hardcore if you get them but you don't necessarily need to have them you could swap them out with another damage option if that's what you're into uh, next up, we've got Gloves of the Illuminator, which will give us crit strike chance, attack speed for fireball, which is huge, ranks to fireball, which is huge, and sun chance on our lucky hit. Now, fireball is going to bounce as it travels, exploding each time that it hits the ground, but its explosion will do 75 to 65 percent less damage. Uh, this is similar to Rolling Magma in Path of Exile, if any of you guys have seen that. If not, I'm going to throw up a graphic of it real quick. I assume it's going to be very similar to this, uh, and that that's, sounds phenomenal to me. It, it could be complete garbage. We're going to have to actually get the item and test it out to find out, but between these two uniques right here, they, they both add ranks to Fireball, so our Fireball is going to be... Whew, way up there in level just between these two ranks and then the five points that we put in naturally okay uh but all right next up we got aspect of fortune your lucky hit chance is increased by 10 to 20 percent while you have a barrier active keep in mind we have ice armor which counts as a barrier so we'll have that up anytime that ice armor is up as well as um i believe i get another barrier as well as on the pants so whenever we heal beyond 100% life we're getting that barrier that last eight seconds now that doesn't show that it has an internal cooldown it probably does have a cooldown but it may not have it so you could just permanently have that barrier up giving you permanent lucky hit chance potentially that may not be how it works but potentially as long as you're healing yourself beyond 100% life uh, you know that, that sounds really really strong uh, last up, we have, well, as far as armor goes, we have Exploiter's Aspect. Now, this is going to feed into our Immobilize. Um, you have 20% increased crowd control duration, so whenever we immobilize enemies using Aspect of Armageddon or we immobilize enemies using Flame Shield, we're going to be getting that bonus, so that, that's massive. Also, while enemies are unstoppable, so enemies that you can't CC, such as bosses, uh, you'll deal 20 to 50% increased damage to them. So that's just a raw 20% flat damage that I'll be doing against bosses. This is this is really nice. There's another option that you can take that spreads the crowd control to another enemy. Let's see. Aspect of shared misery right here. Uh, when you crowd when you hit a crowd controlled enemy, there's a 30 to 50% chance for that crowd controlled enemies to spread effect to another enemy, which is actually really good. And I was using that for a little while uh, in the beta with the flame shield immobilized because you're dealing damage to all enemies around you every second. Right, so you're immobilizing them and then boom, you're immediately hitting them, giving them that chance to proc the exploiter's aspect and uh, all right, sorry, not the exploiter, giving that chance to proc the aspect of shared misery. But I ended up taking this out for uh, just overall more damage and longer crowd control duration. Uh, I didn't feel like spreading the CC was actually too important. 
But uh, next we're gonna check out Melted Heart of Selig. No idea if that's how you say it, but we're gonna get resist to all out of here, which is huge being a hardcore player. We're gonna get all stats. We're gonna get core skill damage. Keep in mind, core skill damage is absolutely huge for us. Not only does Staff of Endless Rage give us ranks to Fireball, but it also gives us core skill damage as well as this. Now, Fireball is a core skill. So it's just gains on gains there, right? Uh, you, we've already talked about Aspect of Armageddon. This is huge, so good for Inferno. Uh, adds damage as well as immobilizing enemies. And then finally, we have Aspect of Control, right? You deal 30 to 40% more damage to immobilized, stunned, or frozen enemies. As you know, we're immobilizing the crap out of these mobs uh, between Flame Shield and Inferno. So that's massive 30 to 40 percent more damage now if it's a boss keep in mind we're using exploiters there to get that extra damage so we have the extra damage on regular mobs and elites and we have the extra damage on bosses as well now i'm not going to go like super deep into the paragon board or anything like that because i think that there's enough videos out there that can explain the paragon board and you can kind of just follow the path that i took i've gone a lot of different ways and this is, it just seems like this is the best min max paragon board that i could make i spent a couple days on it did a lot of renditions with uh, different amounts of boards etc and i it, it's up to you man you can do a little bit of changes if that's what you're into but this is what i've settled on being my final build and paragon for endgame I hope everybody enjoyed the video. Make sure you swing by the stream. If you have any questions, any concerns, and you need some help with something, I'll be there pretty much nonstop for the next week grinding out this uh, hardcore push. And uh, yeah, be sure to drop some questions and concerns down in the comments as well. If you don't use Twitch and you're a YouTube Andy, that's perfectly fine. And I hope to see you guys out there, man. Y'all have a wonderful day. Peace out.